Hello my soccer universe. Going into the international break, the Serie A table is even tighter than it has been before. On top we have now six teams within two points with four of those being level on 25 points in between first and sixth place. And a similar situation also on the bottom of the table where we also have six teams within two points. Now the pileup is a little bit more towards the top but also tells you it is quite 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 tight there. Most damningly though is that Milan is not part of the top tier because they again drop unnecessary points in Cagliari. Defensive frailties, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, are of course to blame there. But if you're a fan of Serie A in general, this bounces really, really, really well. Add to that really good performances in Europe and Serie A, I think, can be considered at the moment the second strongest league as an overall package in Europe. And I would say it's even the best league in terms of suspense so far. At the moment, it looks like that we have a title race between Napoli and Inter with Atalanta potentially going in there and Fiorentina really hitting their stride as well. And on the bottom, it's always chaos, which also makes it quite as exciting. So let's say let's run through the games. We'll start at the disaster show that was Milan. We'll end it at the big game between Inter and Napoli. And in between, we'll just summarize the other results briefly. <music> Man, this Milan is frustrating. You beat Real Madrid, a great performance, and then you only play a 3-3 against Cagliari, a game that you well could have lost. I mean, there are no two doubts about it. On the other side, you twice re-established a lead, and twice you cannot hold on, and the defensive frailties in there were really, really bad. Especially the go-ahead goal for Cagliari, where a corner finds Sortea free on the edge of the box. It's the left side of the Milan defense. And the equalizer, very similar stuff. Yes, a brilliant goal by Zappa, the way he takes the shot, but why is he free in the box? Again, left side of the defense. And then the 2-2 again by Zappa. Strahine Pavlovic and Fofana are not on the same page. Fofana more or less assists Zappa, who then takes a great shot as well. And I don't want to talk about the great save that Magnon made in the first half. The goal that Zappa scored, if he wouldn't have put his foot in there, he would not have been offside. So it should have been 2-2 at the half. That's why Milan could have lost it. And the multiple chances that Milan gave up, especially at the end of the first and the beginning of the second half. On the positive, Rafa Leao scored two goals. He started together with Camarda. So first start for Camarda, which I think should have been the big story of the game. It definitely wasn't. But that was actually a really nice touch to see. And both of the goals that Leal scored were really nice attacks. The first one, a beautiful chip ball by Riders over the Cagliari defense. And then Leal even chips it over the goalkeeper as well. Beautiful goal. And his second goal also. I mean, that was a great defensive action by Jaw with words of Cagliari. Attack for Fana takes the ball, plays it deeper beautifully in the run of Rafa. For Leao, who actually can give Milan the first lead of the evening. That was not meant to be. And then you bring on even Tammy Abraham for Camarda, and he immediately strikes three minutes after coming in because a Pulisic shot is just meekly parried, and Abraham can slot it home. But boy, there was so much more in this game. And yes, I want to give huge credit to Cagliari. This is a, a team playing against relegation. A team that really gave it their all. A team that actually played already well last week when they lost to Lazio and didn't concede with two men down. So that has to be added as well. Davide Nicola again doing a great job. But as a team that wants to play for the title and you're already out of it at this point of the season, you need to get these wins home. This is really uh, disappointing. And yes, Calgary put in way more of a shift and a way more of a team than our Real Madrid. But still. Well, the big top clash between Inter and Napoli that was built as 2v1 ahead of the round actually turned out to be not 2v1 ahead of the round because Atalanta and Fiorentina had overtaken these two. Meanwhile, it was still the top clash of the round and whatever the result, it would result in the table topper going into the international break. It ends in a 1-1 draw that definitely helps Napoli a whole lot more than it does Inter. Inter had more of the game in the end. Yes, the opening stages were rather open. Quaraskelia, Barella, all having chances. The opener came then after a Quaraskelia corner that Rahmani puts towards goal and McTominay just taps it in from a short distance. And then Napoli more or less shut up shop as they have been doing under Conte, similar as they did against Milan. However, this time they concede. There was already a chance by 
Varela there was I think one by Lautaro and then it's an absolutely gorgeous shot by the Vermin as I call him Hakan Celanoglu that gives into the equalizer what a brilliant shot technique yes Meret is on that ball and yes you think he could have done better on that one but on the other side this shot swerved so much it's really really hard to save it was one to frame I gotta say second half starts and it's all in there was a chance by Lautaro that was thwarted by Napoli defense there was a shot by Di Marco that was blocked off many others the biggest chance of course was a penalty that Celanoglu who has not missed in ages for his clubs he has missed for Turkey but not for his clubs puts on the post and what I liked about that one so much is that it was shot so hard that it actually then jumped out of the penalty box as well off that post so pretty remarkable stuff Barella then Another chance where he goes around a defender, sees his shot saved, but the biggest chance of the entire second half, I would argue, outside of the penalty, then fell to Simeone in stoppage time who could have given Napoli a rather lucky, if not to say undeserved winner. As I said, it ends 1-1, keeps very much Napoli's title hopes alive, doesn't thwart Inters. However, the table up top is now much closer than it was before. The Serie A round started already on Thursday evening with a 1-1 draw between Genoa and Como. It needed a 92nd minute equalizer by Genoa by Voliaco to secure that point for the relegation thread inside. Mario Balotelli, I didn't mention it already, made his debut last time around, got a yellow card. He again came on, again got a yellow card. Not the most auspicious start on his return to Serie A. Legend Empoli also play on the 1-1 draw. Again, the home side needed to get the equalizer, but the most notable thing is the Pietro Pellegri getting again a goal. Maybe he's getting back to form. On Saturday, Parma got their second win of the season in a comeback against Venezia. Valeri and then Bonnie in the second half turned the game around. Huge points for Parma, Venezia still struggling. And I would love nothing more than to say that the Derby della Mole again delivered. Yeah, not really. Juve got a relatively comfortable win with goals by Wea and Kenan Yildiz, header this time around. But it annoys me that Torino is so non-competitive, even though they sometimes seem competitive. It's just an annoyance for me. Atalanta also keep on winning already eighth win of the season, but they had to come from behind. They were down just in stoppage time of the first half, but then right after that, Pajalic and Toure on goal settled the game for Atalanta, who of course were the better team in the entire game. Meanwhile, all hopes for a Roma turnaround were dashed by Bologna, a resurgent Bologna, who after tons of draws now already have the fourth win of the season. They go into the halftime with a 1-0 lead by Castro, then after a couple of changes by coach Juric, El Sharavi gets an equalizer only for Bologna to immediately re-establish their lead through an Orsolini goal, then they had even a goal by Dalinga disallowed, Carlson in the 77th settles the game seemingly, however El Sharavi in the 83rd pulls one back, Roma cannot find an equalizer, and what's even worse, coach Juric got the sack or the second coach sacked by Roma. It's not that Rossi will come back, but it remains to be seen who will go into that dumpster fire. Meanwhile, Moise Ken seems rejuvenated at Fiorentina. He gets a hat-trick in a 3-1 win over Verona. The game was 1-1 for quite a while. Moise Ken in the second half gives Fiorentina the lead and seals the deal in stoppage time after the assist by the hair. And with a nice shot from outside of the box, Zakanje gives Lazio also another win. Lazio still riding high, sitting currently in fifth place of the table. 1-0 at Monza, not much to talk home about. But with that consistency, Marco Baroni's team is surely destined for bigger things this season. As I have said, the draw between Napoli and Inter put Napoli back on top of the table, but only by a measly point. If they would have won, this would have been a little bit more of a distance. So Inter are still the favorites to win it all as they are considered the strongest team in Sierra. But it's really, really, really tight. I'm especially excited that Atalanta and Fiorentina are mixing it up in there. Milan and Bologna. <sighs> Better not say too much about it. I already complained too much about Milan. Bologna, I think with a run, could join up there. Not quite sure yet. I think Bologna will not take the role of Fiorentina last season. And let's see if Fiorentina can keep up their good form. But you know, with a Moise Ken in the rare goal scoring form, that seems quite exciting as well. 
On the bottom, we have one surprise team with Monza, who despite good performances really cannot get many points. Venezia, despite two wins, are also on the bottom there, but it's really, really tight. Lecce is just a point ahead of those. And then we have Genoa, Cagliari and Como. And I think Verona and Parma are also not quite out of the picture, although they have now a three-point cushion. But three points is not that much. The question is... Will Roma's disaster class pull them into the relegation battle? I really don't think slash hope so, but at this moment everything is up for grabs for Roma. Coming back from the international break, we get actually two real Serie A classics. We have, of course, Milan-Juve. Huge game. It is a must-win game for Milan already in, in order to be able to catch up with Juve. A draw will not help Milan. That much is for certain, but this is not an easy game for sure. And then we have the Derby della Sole, Napoli against Roma. This will be a rather one-sided affair. I don't know who the new Roma coach is for now. Maybe there's a chance for a turnaround. I don't quite see it, but Napoli will try their best to mount a title challenge. Inter will go to Verona. Should be an easy win, but we said that before as well. This Inter team can be gotten it. Look out for Atalanta playing at Parma and especially Fiorentina playing at Como. This could be a very interesting tie as well. And then we have the little meta of Lazio against Bologna. I think this is a really interesting round. Well, so much from me from Serie A for round 12. Please let me know what you thought about these games. I think it's probably the most exciting league in Europe at this very moment. Give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll talk to you soon about more things in my Serie A universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye.